All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the first real video of the Nurse Dose podcast. Um, been wanting to do these for a while in order to make long form videos that aren't restricted by the algorithms and everything of like TikTok and Instagram. So we can get more in depth on these topics, which a lot of them, you really have to get in depth on them to actually be able to understand what's going on. And for the first real video, what I want to talk about is the way that I remember stimmy locations, stimmy leads, um, and how I used it to easily pass the section of my CCRN and how I use it in practice to understand where these stimmies are happening, what coronary arteries to look at with post cabbage patients and things like that in my actual practice. So just a little bit about me before we get into it. Um, I've been a nurse in the CVICU and transplant for about eight to nine years now. Um, I've been charged nurse and uh, now considered a clinical practice specialist. I do a lot of education around um, a lot of different topics. And um, I'm also the host of the Nurse Dose podcast, which I know a lot of y'all listen to as well. And it's where we talk about a lot of things, critical care, about new grads in the ICU, all things like that. So if you want to check that out as well, it's on Spotify. Apple Podcasts as well. So getting into the topic of the video, how can we learn STEMI leads so that it's very efficient to bring up that information whenever we need it, especially in stressful situations, because when someone's having a STEMI, it's usually not a very calm environment at that point. But what people usually do when they're learning STEMIs is they'll have something like this. They'll have a table like this, and this mimics what an EKG printout looks like. So you'll have leads one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF, one, or V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. And this is kind of how it'll print out when you have a regular EKG. And so with this, they're basically teaching you to memorize where on an EKG that these groupings happen. And as you can see, the groupings aren't very inherent. They're, they're, they're not something that is easily remembered, right? You kind of have to memorize where these are. So you're, you're memorizing something on top of memorizing something. And for me, this just did not work out well, especially when I was studying for my CCRN. This was the big issue that I had. I needed something where if somebody said, okay, you're having ST elevation and leads two, three and AVF, what kind of STEMI are you having? I didn't have to think about this table and try and figure out for myself where this was. I needed something that I could draw on my test and go back to it for every single STEMI question. And I also needed something that I didn't have to rely on an EKG printout in order to make these um, assumptions of where the STEMIs are. So as a new grad studying for my CCRN, I actually came up with this graphic. And this is the graphic that I use to this day, um, a little bit more modified because it shows the coronary arteries and things like that. Um, but this is what I use in order to determine STEMI locations and determine which leads I need to be monitoring for my post cabbage patients or some of my other um, post cardiac surgery patients as well. Now, if y'all are interested in having this information and more um, at your fingertips while you're at work or wanting to study for the CCRN, you can pick up this EKG leads and locations cheat sheet that I have available. Um, it'll be linked in the description below. So in order to know how this method works, we have to know what a lead is and what it does. The lead isn't the sticky thing that you put on the patient that is an electrode. Now the combination of different electrodes will give us different leads. And now what a lead actually is, it's a view of the heart, of the heart's electrical uh, conduction from different angles of the heart, different uh, viewpoints. So I like to think of leads as little electrical cameras that are looking in on the heart at different angles. So as you can see here, lead one is kind of looking in on the left side or the lateral side of the heart. Lead two down here is kind of looking up at the apex or the inferior portion. And then three is looking at the inferior portion over by the right side. So you can see how these leads will give us different views of the heart. And if we are seeing a STEMI in one of these different leads, it could lead us to the assumption of where that STEMI is actually happening because we are looking at it through our camera lens, through our lead, and seeing that ST elevation. So with this, the only thing that you really need to memorize is the locations of the lead in space around the heart. So we're gonna start first with our limb leads. These are usually the first leads that we are looking at. 
and we're gonna have one, two, and three. Those are gonna be our limb leads. And these are made up from the limb electrodes that we put on the patient, so on the arms and on the legs. So with lead one, it's gonna be looking at your lateral aspect of the heart or the left side of the heart. So it's gonna be starting over on this side and it's going to continue, we're gonna continue clockwise to find the rest of the leads. So then we'll have lead two, which is down here, which is going to be looking kind of at the apex or the inferior portion of the heart. And as we continue going clockwise, we're gonna have three, which is gonna be looking at the inferior portion and the right side of the heart. So next we're gonna be looking at the augmented leads. This is gonna be AVL, AVF, and AVR. And what A stands for is augmented. These are augmented leads that are actually brought about by combining uh, several other leads together to get these views that are not necessarily directly viewed, but can be viewed when combining these leads together. So AVL is gonna be looking at the lateral aspects. So L, lateral or left, whichever helps you. Um, next, we're gonna be looking at AVF. So AVF, you can think of foot, um, and this is gonna be looking at the inferior portion of the heart. And then you have AVR, which is gonna be looking at the right. So R for right. And next, we, and finally, we're gonna be looking at the V leads. And these are honestly probably my favorite if I did have favorite leads. Um, so these, you kind of have to think of the heart in 3D space at this point. And there's a ring around it, kind of like a ring around Saturn, right? So with this, you're gonna have your V leads, they're gonna be in order, so V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. So what you do with these V leads is you're going to take basically an imaginary rod from where the electrode is for that V lead and put it straight through the chest, and that portion where it hits the heart is where it's actually looking. So if we look at this, this picture doesn't do it justice as much, but V1 and V2 are going to be looking at your septal area. V3 and V4 are gonna be more anterior, and then V5 and V6 are going to be lateral. So you can see now that there are some color coordinations here. So the blue over on this side, AVL, 1, V5 and V6, these are going to be lateral. V3 and V4, it's gonna be anterior. V1 and V2 is going to be septal and then two, three, and AVF are going to be inferior. And so you can see how just looking at the heart, knowing in your mind what the heart looks like and where these leads are in space relative to the heart, you can easily imagine which leads are going to be for the, the lateral, the anterior, the septal, or the inferior. And now before we get into the coronary arteries that go along with these associated STEMIs, um, I wanted to do a test strip with you to show you how I use this. Um, graphic and this kind of mindset in order to figure out what kind of stimmies we're having. So the first thing I'm gonna be looking at is looking to see if there is any ST elevation. So it looks like we have some in two, three, and AVF here. I don't really see any anywhere else. We do have some reciprocal um, depression, which we'll talk about in a second. But if we're looking at two, three, and AVF, I know two, three, and AVF are down here in the inferior portion. So it's an inferior MI. So this is really easy. And another way that you can confirm this is you can look at the reciprocal um, depression. So if we're looking at this graphic up here and we're looking at the opposite side of the heart from where this is looking, we can see AVL1, V5, and V6. So if we look in those areas of this strip, you can actually see depression in AVL. You can see a little bit here in one, and a little bit in V5 and V6, just a little bit, right? So this can also help you when you are imagining where the reciprocal depression is going to happen as well, which is something that those tables aren't really gonna show you. So this graphic is extremely helpful in giving you a full picture of what is kind of happening during these STEMIs. All right, so now if we want to throw the coronary arteries into the mix, this is kind of what it would look like. And you can combine the two graphics together, the one that has the leads looking at the heart, as well as this one, which shows the coronary arteries and what they are actually supplying. You can combine them together to actually confirm this information. But let's go over it real quick. So the lateral uh, portion of the heart is going to be looked at by AVL1, V5, and V6. And that is going to be supplied by the left circumflex. Next, if we're looking at anterior, it's going to be V3, V4. That is going to be supplied by the LAD. 
And now the septal one, this is where it gets kind of tricky. Septal can be, so that's going to be V1 and V2. It can be supplied by the left anterior descending and the right coronary artery. There's portions from both that will supply it. So you could have an issue with both arteries if you have a septal MI. And now finally, the inferior MI is going to be 2, 3, and AVF, like we said, and that is mainly supplied by the right coronary artery. So why is it important to know the coronary arteries and the leads that are associated with them? Let's say you had a patient that went to the cath lab and they got stented in the left circumflex. Which leads would you want to monitor to make sure that that stent stays open? You're going to be looking at AVL1, V5, and V6. So you're going to make sure your primary lead on your monitor is one of those so that you know exactly when the ST elevation starts to rise um, whenever something happens to that stent, if something does happen to it. So this is kind of the same with a cabbage patient. If you have a patient who comes back and their LAD um, was bypassed, right? You are going to want to look at V3, V4, V1, V2 in order to see if that anastomosis fails or if that graft fails and uh, to be able to alert the surgeon as soon as possible. All right, and that's the basics of how I learned STEMI locations along with the associated coronary arteries um, for the CCRN. And just for those, I know people are gonna say, how are you gonna draw something like that on your CCRN test? So they give you some paper, right, to do math equations or whatever you have to do. So this is literally what I draw when I first sat down. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It looks like it's a potato and it's got all these leads around it, right? But this will give me the same information that I needed as did the other, you know, professional graphic. So this is what I used and made the CCRN so easy when it came to those STEMI questions. And I hope it helps you too. Um, everyone has their own preferred way of memorizing or learning things. So if the table works for you, that's awesome. This is what I have found works for me and a lot of the people that I've precepted in the past. So if y'all have any questions, just let me know. Um, but yeah, this is the first video that we've done. So if it's a little rough, I'm sorry, but there will be more and hopefully the quality gets better.